guys. Welcome to Ready to Scale. I'm Ellie Perlman, your host, broadcasting from sunny California. When I'm not behind the mic, I buy multifamily properties with passive investors who partner with me on my deals. So this month, I'm giving away a property tour guide. This document will walk you through the, the process of touring a property, what to look for and what to ask when you tour an apartment building. You can find the guide at www.elliepearlman.com slash resources. If you enjoy the podcast, please take a minute to rate us and don't forget to like and follow along with me on social media as well. All right. So today, my guest is Daniel Ramsey. So Daniel Ramsey is the founder and CEO of My Outdesk, the highest rated virtual assistant company in the marketplace. Daniel is a longtime licensed real estate broker, mortgage broker, and a general contractor who's hold hundreds who sold, sorry, hundreds of homes and made millions in commissions. So back in 08, he was inspired by his own time management struggles to find a better way to help agents leverage their time and energy and created My Outdesk to provide a solution to the office administration, marketing, and prospecting tasks that every agent has, but most lack the time to focus on. Daniel, welcome to the show. I'm really happy to have you here today. Thanks for having me, Ellie. Yeah, absolutely. So can you tell me, the listeners, a little bit more about your background and how you got started in real estate? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I was an investment banker. I worked for a company called Barclays Global Investments, and I bought my first house. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to buy a house. You know, that's what you do, or at least that's what I thought you did. You know, young people aren't doing that anymore, Ellie. We're, we're like, we're old. I guess I'm old at, at least. So I'm 23. I'm buying a house. And my agent, who was a REMAX agent, actually mailed me the keys. Like he snail mailed the keys. And I was looking at the HUD and I was looking at how much the mortgage person made and the real estate person made. And, you know, between the two of them, they made like some, some like twelve, thirteen thousand $13,000. And I thought, Ellie, I can do this job. Like, and literally started my own brokerage, um, you know, within six months of actually buying my first home. Wow. Wow. Starting at the age of 23, that's amazing. Most guys, you know, they get out of college, you think about, you know, a couple of years down the road, we're going to be at a, you know, work for a big firm and you've started at Barclays, which is, you know, a great firm. Um, but it's, it's interesting that you, you saw the potential and you understood that this is what you wanted to do. Yeah. Well, you know, what's wild is, um, I always knew business was my thing and real estate is how all the wealthy people kept their wealth, right? So exactly. they, they own real estate and business is the fuel behind buying the real estate. So I was like, well, what better way to combine, you know, what I love, which was business and building wealth. So I just jumped right in and honestly, my outdesk started because kind of accidentally. Um, so I got married in 2009 and I was on my honeymoon. I was in Guatemala and I'm, it's middle of the night. It's like one o'clock in the morning and I'm literally closing a real estate transaction at the bar and the bartender who's Hispanic is making fun of me in Spanish. And I speak just enough to know that he was like making fun of me. I have this horrible picture of me, like eyes are all red and I've got a beer and there I am working on my honeymoon, you know? And then after that, I, and something happened. It just snapped kind of in that moment. I didn't want to spend the rest of my life having to work on vacation. And I wanted to have kids and be married and have a normal life. So I came back to the States. Thankfully, I'm still married. So just so your audience knows, you know, it worked. Uh, I came back to the States and I really kind of doubled down and focused on building systems and processes for my business so that I wasn't the one that always had to be answering the questions or doing the work or being involved in every single transaction. And yeah, part of that, mm -hmm. and part of that was just hiring some virtual assistants. And I think that's really key because, and I, I want to keep that conversation for the, the strategy and the process parts of the interview, but a lot of people, there's a misconception that if you want to scale, you need to have a full on team. Usually they need to be, they need to go to the office. You need to, you know, pay high salaries, you need a lot of money to do it. And the truth is that it's not, that's mm -hmm. not what it takes. You, you need to know how to do it. You need to utilize your time in the be and find the best people. They don't have to go to the office every day. They don't have to even be in the States. Yeah, um, yeah. 
So we, yeah. we're gonna. I, I really want to talk about that. It's it's a topic that really excites me as well. Yeah. Um, but I want to start with the asset fortune. So sure. Um, you're investing in residential, and then you moved a little bit to commercial. You started with residential when you were 23 years old. Yeah. Um, so what made you interested in actually diversifying? You know, starting with residential, then move into commercial real estate. You know, it was really the lure of like, I talked to a couple of commercial brokers and they were like, oh, you're a residential guy. And they kind of looked at me like I, I wasn't that important, you know? And I was like, man, I, in Sacramento, which is where we are, there are 9,000 licensees and I was number 14. And I had this commercial guy tell me that, oh, you're just a residential guy, right? You're just a res. You don't really know the business. You don't really know real estate. And I was like, huh. And that kind of caused me just to kind of start playing around. And one of my first commercial deals was just a commercial building in the front and some residential units in the back. And then it morphed into some apartment complexes. And we bought, you know, some various different commercial assets over time. And um, then I did the silly thing of developing, you know, some units, which was interesting. And that's why I'm a commercial uh, or I'm a contractor because, I was getting a discount at Home Depot for renovations. I'd get like 10 to 20% off just by having a contractor's license, you know? So I got into that game because, you know, I just felt like I needed to learn the commercial space. And so that, that's really what happened. And, um, you know, we just, I just closed on, a, on an office building for our business right now. And actually it's a really great situation because, you know, interest rates are so silly low right now I bought a lot more building than I ever thought we would ever need. And because of that, we'll lease some of it out and hopefully have a lower cost of actually running an office, you know? So that's, that's my whole real estate asset world. It's crazy. Apartments, um, mobile homes, uh, residential houses. I've done some development, all that, all that mixed stuff. So usually what you're saying is basically because the, the, Right now, interest rates are very low and the, the, you can find, you know, you can actually buy a lot more properties than you've planned. And so you take advantage of the situation where it is right now, where it's also relatively, I'm not going to say easy to get a com loan on a commercial building, but it's not as hard, obviously, as it was in 07, 09, you know, 08. Um, so that's really interesting. And so you're, you're doing a little bit of everything. You're diversifying and you're growing your company. And to do that, you're using, you're basically, you're, you've built a virtual team to help you build your business. So I'm happy yep. to kind of move to the, our, our second part of the, the uh, interview today and talk about the strategy. So why did you create a virtual team as opposed to a traditional team where you just interview people, they all go to the office and you know, why, why, why go with a virtual team to begin with? Well, there's two things like the same reason I went into commercial. I mean, in the beginning it was like, I, you know, the commercial guy was like, I don't know if you should try this, Daniel. And I was like, ah, I'm going to check that out. Um, but long term, the reason I've stayed in commercial is because the market for a residential has been so fierce. Same thing with apartment complexes in California right now. The cap rates are really low. It's a very fierce market. And unemployment is such a low, it's at such a low rate, right? And so, you know, we'd put an ad out and we get a hundred people who apply and there'd be like somebody from McDonald's and somebody who's never had a job who's 35 years old applying, right? And then what we would do is we, we listed a, an ad in the Philippines, which is where all of our folks are, and we'd get really high caliber quality applicants. And these people had experience and they were hardworking and they really cared. And so it was just where we went in terms of demand. Um, when we first did it, it, it's funny because a friend of mine um, who's in San Diego, down by you, said, hey, Daniel, can you find me some virtual assistants? I was like, oh, absolutely. And at this point, I had like a couple, right? And they were helping with marketing and sales. But this guy said, hey, can you get me five? And I was like, five? And his name's Christian. And he's like, I'm like, yeah, I can get you five, but I'm going to have to charge you something because, you know, it, it's a lot of work. And he's like, yeah, yeah, just charge me. And literally, that's how my outdesk was born. A friend of mine said, yeah, 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 just charge me. 
And today we have 1,200 virtual assistants working for real estate investors, agents, brokers, mortgage people, just helping them close deals, find deals, and really market their business. So, you know, it, it was simple. We, we had a need. I needed to hire people. It was hard to find great people locally um, and hard to keep them. And when we put an ad in the Philippines, a lot of really great people came came out of the woodwork and, and then friends started asking me, Hey, could you get me some? Could you get me some? And that's, that's how it, how it started. It was kind of accidental. Interesting. So you're basically, you're running this business on top of, in addition to your real estate business, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that you're using, you're basically hiring a virtual team to help you run both, you know, uh, verticals of your business. Yeah, we have, so it's interesting because the virtual assistant, we have about 15 folks in the, in the U S and most of those folks are in sales or marketing or operationally leaders for the business. And then we have about 65 folks in the Philippines that help us run the company. So your question, um, and I, I love this because if you're listening right now, you're trying to figure out how to scale a real estate practice. What we believe in is a blended model where some of, some of your staff is physically here in the U.S., like the sales, the, the analyst. I mean, if you're trying to find properties, you need somebody who's got kind of that real estate brain and can actually crunch some numbers and put a pro forma together, right? So the, the brains and the sales machine is here in the U.S. And all of the doing, all of the stuff that needs to get done but isn't mission critical should be outsourced and, and, given, and taken off your plate, basically. So your folks that are employees here in the U.S. are really hyper-focused on the most important thing. I mean, if you've gone to MBA school or business school, the one thing that everybody pounds into you is, you know, do your core business and get rid of everything else. And that's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's it. That's what, that's yep. the rule. And um, so we just help people do that, which is really hyper-focused by creating like a blended market where some are physical and some are outsourced. That's very interesting. So what would you say are typical roles or assignments that you would outsource to the virtual team from the Philippines or outside of the U.S.? You know, the first question, I want to I start by who should do this, and then we'll go to what they should do, right? So in, in our book, and we're going to give away a copy, if you're watching on video, I just threw it up on stage. If you're, if, you're, if you're not, you know, if you're listening on the podcast, don't worry, we'll give out a code and you can get a copy of it. But here's the thing, in the book, we've broken business into three different sections. So it's the I do it, the we do it, and the they do it. And when you're in the I do it, your focus is 100% on learning and growing and understanding the market and figuring out your place in that, in that marketplace. In the we do it, you're 100% building a team, meaning you're hiring people, you're learning how to get leads, you're learning how to close those leads and really squeeze the profit out of your business, right? It's the we do it. It's when you're in there doing the work along right next side to somebody and you're, you're just building it together. And the they do it, now, now you're looking for ways to really kind of double down, meaning you're adding different legs. If, if you're a real estate investor, you might be getting more investor clients to come with you and buy bigger assets. You're, you're looking at ways to really leverage the business and grow. And in that space, it's all about your vision. So if you have a big vision where a lot of people can come with you, then you know, you're in the they do it stage. So for us, in the I do it stage, you're, you're basically, you're going to outsource everything to third parties so that they can do it. You might have a CPA that just handles all of your books. You might have a marketing company that helps you generate leads, but typically you're not doing a lot of the work. You're finding third parties to help you do it. In the we stage, that's when you start putting together that blended market. Um, or that blended office where you have some physical people who are helping you find deals and sell and market. And then all of the back end stuff is, can be done with a virtual assistant. So for instance, marketing like this call, Ellie, you talked to, you, you talked to Elle, who is our marketing and PR person. And she reached out to you and said, Hey, Daniel would be a great guest. And she set this whole thing up. And it was on my calendar at two o'clock California time. And I got to come and show up and just spend some time with you and visit with you. 
that's a great example of what a virtual assistant they can do for you. They can schedule your appointments. They can get you in front of the people that matter. They can help with sales calls just to understand who's, you know, who's registering or needing help and, and kind of organizing all of that. A lot of administrative stuff, a lot of transaction coordination or project management and some of the largest investors out there, you know, there's, there's a lot of calls. Hey, my, I need a new toilet or the door broke or you know, who's responsible for the HVAC? Is it me or is it you? What does the lease say? So there's a lot of project management and coordination that can be done uh, with a virtual assistant. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And so you're, you're and I, lo I love that the I, we, and they basically on the stage of where you are in the process, you can actually also move. So if someone is just starting out, they can be at the I stage and source a lot of it to third parties and, you know, companies. And then when they move and scale, they migrate some um, back, you know, exactly migrate back. And then they have their own employees here and the employees you yeah. know, or contractors in, you know, in the Philippines. Yeah. And then the final stage is basically the day which is kind of how you scale. I love that. Um, how much, you know, in terms of, of you know, the costs, how much are we yeah. talking about? Because I'm, I'm assuming that's one of the main benefits of mm -hmm. hiring a virtual team. Uh, I, I can think of another one, which is, you know, some investors want to have, they don't want to go to the office every day. They yep, want to, yep. you know, keep, they're maintain a certain lifestyle and a lot can be done when you're not physically in the office. Um, so they can do their, their job and you can, you know, travel, you can work from home, you can go to the office on occasion. Um, but how is it, you know, I think the, but the main benefit is the cost, which is, you know, um, obviously lower than hire an entire team and have an actual office. Yep. What is the differences in the cost? What are we talking about? It's usually 60 to 70% less expensive to call my out desk and just have, have us help you find someone. Um, you know, most of our clients say it's around 65 to 70%. Um, to give your listeners an idea, it's seventeen forty-seven a month for our service. So a little bit over 400 bucks every week. Um, and, you know, we can do everything from project management to, you know, we're recording this video right now. Uh, one of our virtual professionals will actually take the video, edit it up, throw our intro and outro on it, and then get it ready to post, right? And that's, that's an example of something like, you and I have to be here to do this video. And it's really important that we're loving on your audience, giving them value, you know, that, that you guys want to hear from us, right? Um, but all of the behind the scenes work does not have to be you or I. And that's the mindset that we try to help people understand. And when you get a consultation with us, if you jump on our website, you can grab one. We'll go through like who's on your team now, what systems and processes do you have, what kind of things will you need to buy in order to make this work. I mean, a lot of your, your folks are, are virtual or they like to travel. A great example of that is we're on a Zoom call right now. Well, if you want to be you know, virtual, you need to have a, some sort of way to meet with your people. And Zoom's a great way because you can share screens and you can text and type and make phone calls. So we'll just help you kind of set up and get ready to hire a virtual assistant and make sure that it's successful. So you're not wasting time or energy or money. Um, but that's, that's really our value is we're like a, we're like a, not, we're not a coaching company, but we're like a support mechanism so that it, that you do it correctly and you don't, you're not wasting a bunch of time or energy. That's great. That sounds really great. Uh, and I think it's a good time to kind of move to the uh, third, you know, um, portion over interview about process. So I want to talk about the hiring process. Sure. How can you describe, can you talk a little bit about the hiring process when it comes to different uh, maybe markets in terms of where, the location of where virtual assistants are um, and the different roles. How, what is the process? How does it look like or how should it look like if someone wants to hire a virtual team, not necessarily going through your company, but just in general, what would you say uh, is the ideal process? Yeah. Okay. So great. So process is everything. Um, you know, we talked about the I, we, and the they. 
in the we, and if you're listening right now, this is the biggest, one of the biggest frustrations that I had to learn my way out of. It's like you're, you're an entrepreneur and you, you've got all the ideas and how you want things done in your head. Ellie, you've probably had that same thing. It's in my head, right? But somehow you have to get those processes and systems that you just do naturally and you have to get them out on paper or out in a video. So my favorite thing, and I'm just giving away all of our best stuff to your audience. I, I, hope, I hope you guys use these things and it helps you drive revenue and scale your business. But my favorite thing is play, pause, do. And so here's how it works. We're on a video right now, but it's not intuitive for us as entrepreneurs to realize what's in our brain just isn't going to be in a normal employee's brain. Like they're just not going to think like us, right? You're smiling and nodding your head. This has happened for you, right? Yeah, even though I have to say I have a great team, uh, but yep. not everyone is able to understand everything that we have in our mind at all times. That's they right. And, you know, parts of it, but entrepreneurs just think, I think, differently. Yeah, we're different and, and, and we are compensated differently and we have different stressors because that's what we choose, right? But the best method for getting what's in your brain out is just recording your screen. Like you can use Zoom, like the call that we're on, record your screen and then do the job once or twice. Like just do it from start to finish. And then while you're recording the screen, you can talk about the how, what, and why. So step one is just get it out on, on out of your brain and either on paper or in a video. Now, what people screw up in this place because it can get screwed up is like, well, I've, I missed that piece. And so, and my person should have known that. You have to assume that they're five-year-olds. Like I've got a little, I've got a five-year-old. She's cute as hell. But when I give her instructions, I got to, you know, from start to finish, okay, take your shoes off. If I don't take her, tell her to take her shoes off before she gets in the house, there's going to be mud everywhere, you know, and that's just how kids work. So you have to think about every step and give them the how, what, and why you're doing stuff. And then you have a virtual playbook basically for your business. And you can do that for every single thing. Like when an investor calls and they're interested in a project, well, what do they say? Well, you can record yourself having three conversations with different investors and you can actually work through all of the if, ands, and buts, and what's, you know, and then you can put together, you know, an FAQ on when an investor calls, here are all the questions they're going to ask, you know, they're going to ask and here's the answers for them. So that's step one, 100% document the position, document the role. Think to yourself, if I could give away a portion of my day, what would be the thing that I want to give up and how impactful would I be with those extra two or three hours? So, you know, document the role, plan the, the position and then get a video going. And I think that's probably the first step, regardless if you hire my desk or any other kind. Of, and really this works for every employee, right, Ellie? I mean, yeah. everybody needs help. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great, great, great tip, Daniel, to record your screen, show them how it's being done. It's so much better than just to explain, especially since it's a virtual team. They're not here. They're not seeing your screen. Yeah. Not, you're not interacting with them multiple times a day. Yep. Sometimes what you have in your mind is very simple, but it's, it's very, you know, other people just, they, I think they experience it a bit differently. And they understand it differently. So when you share the screen, you show exactly, okay, this is my vision. Yeah, I would only, you know, I would challenge it by saying that I think it's great with virtual, a virtual team. If you hire managers and you promote them and, you know, as they work more with you, they understand how you think, how mm -hmm. you feel, how you see things, then I think letting go is really important and empowering them, but it takes time to get there. And especially when yeah. you just start hiring, it's so imperative. It's so important to have very, very, as you mentioned, to be very detailed, to take them every step along the way. I've made the mistake of hiring someone and giving them very few you know, instructions. And I was sure that they'll understand it, forgetting that, yeah, it's pretty much, you know, it's, 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 it sounds easy to me because it's in my head. Right. You have to share the vision. Absolutely. Um, yep. It, what would you say are the, you know, when it comes to the process, do you have any process that you recommend when it comes to managing the people that you've hired? I mean, how can you, that, that's going to be challenging. If you go to the office, you see them, it's very yeah. simple. 
Yep. What would be your recommendation there? Some of our best practices, and this is probably my favorite one, is, is, you know, it takes 90 days to get somebody up to speed. But in those 90 days, especially when they're virtual, I love doing video conference face-to-face. And some of our best clients will have, you know, a Zoom room open where all of their virtual professionals will be in the room with them when they're working. So you just put it off to the side and they're there. And, and if they have a question, they can say, hey, boss, what's going on? So, you know, the more communication that you have up front, you know, sharing cell phones so you can text, doing video conferences when it makes sense. Um, you know, we suggest once a week, you're doing a 15, 20 minute checkup. How are things going? Do you have any obstacles? Do you need any support? That's a big deal. So communication is probably number two. After you've documented the role and done the play pause do, the next step is just communicate, communicate, communicate. And then my favorite third is always have a like a project management like Slack or we use something called Monday a lot here. Some sort of a project management software where you can actually put in tasks upload documents and then they can go and do the work and then put the documents back and then you can actually correct the work or edit it or approve it. So in our world, having some sort of, um, you know, agile is a, is a new term that's coming up, but we've been using that for years, yeah. you know, an agile project. And so whatever, um, any way that you can communicate expectations like a Monday or a Slack or some sort of system to house templates, I mean, that'll only make your game, like it just elevates everybody in, in the process because there can't be any, you know, there's no excuses once you've documented and you have a system um, that helps you communicate expectations. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is very much, it's key. It's even, I think, uh, I don't know if it's more important, but it's as important as hiring the right people is actually to manage them and make sure that everything you know, it's not only emails back and forth because it's really easy to get lost in the sea of emails, especially today, um, having a system that can, where you can manage, you know, that that's great. So we personally use Airtable. It's one of them. I know folks are using Asana, for instance. There's yeah. so many tools out there, uh, yep. project management tools. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great. Um, before we move to the lightning round questions, um, any advice that you would give to anyone who's looking to scale their, their um, you know, business by outsourcing or, or hiring a team virtually? Yeah. You know, I'm mean, honestly, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but just jump on our website and get a consultation. It's a hundred percent free and I'm not being a salesperson. Like I've trained our sales team to really serve our clients like 100% of what we do is we want you guys to win and, and really thrive because when you win, we win. And uh, oh, we had over a thousand referrals last year, Ellie, where wow. people, our clients said, hey, you should talk to my out desk or hey, let me hook you up with Daniel. It's just, it's just nuts because we give. And that's, that's the reason we wrote the book, Scaling Your Business. So if you don't mind, I'll just give it away now because yeah. it's such a, a big deal. I put 12 years of experience, my heart and soul into this thing. And if you're listening, all you have to do to get it is text the letter, the letters SVP. So scale with virtual professional SVP to 31996. And you'll get an electronic copy, which we're just giving away. And if you wanted to, you could jump on Amazon and just search my out desk. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. And we're going to also put it um, as a part of the show notes. So oh, cool our listeners can, uh, can reach out and, and do that. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Daniel. Um, we have arrived to the lightning round questions are five quick questions. Um, they're going to be quick, interesting, and we're going to go through them pretty quickly. Are you ready? I can't wait. All right. Perfect. So first, uh, first question is what's your favorite hobby? Uh, I'm a wrestling coach. I'm a high school wrestling coach. So I, I, you know, we give 25 hours a week of my time to an underserved, underprivileged high school in that's actually local to Sacramento. And that's my hobby right now. Wow. That's impressive. Wrestling. Yeah. Um, Watch where- out. <laughs> um, what's the uh, number one thing that people don't know about you? Oh my goodness. Um, the number one thing that people, I feel like I tell 
everything to everybody. So <laughs> I like like an open book. Um, uh, I don't know. That one's a tough one because I really tell, I mean, you know, married two daughters. I love what I do. I'm like a business nerd. Like I, I literally go to sleep reading business articles at night. So I'm bad in common. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I'm, I'm so, um, I just live, sleep and like breathe scaling businesses and helping people. So I guess, I mean, now your whole audience knows that. So there all you right. Go. All right. Perfect. What do you wish you had known when you started out? Oh my gosh. Leadership. A hundred percent. Like that vision stuff that we were talking about telling, you know, I would have kept like a handful of great employees had I been better at casting vision, communicating, loving on people. And if you're listening right now, you cannot develop anywhere that will pay more dividends than communicating and leading people. Like if you're really uh, serious about you know, building a business, that's the one area to focus. Um, you know, things that happened today for me uh, happened because I spent, you know, the last 20 year, years learning about how to talk to people and communicate and lead them. And that, that's it. All right. So, Daniel, I want to thank you for, you know, taking the time and share your knowledge. Definitely a lot of golden nuggets right there. I definitely learned, um, you know, a thing or two. Um, and then, so when, if, if one of, you know, the listeners, if, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, um, how can they find you besides obviously Googling your name? Yeah, no, uh, Google my out desk. That's how, um, and if you're listening right now and you're kind of in your journey and you, and anything that we, we talked about that, you know, today, like piqued your interest, we have a ton of like scaling frameworks, scale accelerators. I mean, what we touched on is all in the book too. So um, you can buy one of those at Amazon. Um, the physical copies only 25 bucks, which I think is a steal. Um, and the electronic is completely free. So you can get a PDF for free right now. Um, but just jump on our website. You know, wildly enough, I love helping people grow and scale their business. So myoutdesk.com and uh, yeah, I'd love to connect with your people. All right, perfect. Thank you again, Daniel. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your time.